great event at Dr. Bombay's underwater tea party. Thank you so much for having us. And we know that some of the proceeds will go towards um, women's education in India. Ooh. We wanted to start the podcast, this special live event, in the month of July. Yes. And that is, um, it's Five Boys Awareness Month, and that is something that we, um, as women, can identify with. And so um, we have Tanika Valbrin with us, and she is going to share kind of, First of all, she's a fellow educator turned Ooh, journalist younger. turned CEO. <laughs> so we want to kind of have her share her um, journey from the classroom to today. Yes. And then also we want to know all about the White Dress Project. Hi, everybody. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> um, so it's so nice to be here. Um, thank you to Sweet Tea and Sunshine for having me. I had no idea. Well, I kind of did, but didn't know, but kind of did. It's okay. <laughs> We're friends um, anyway. She's a friend of the show and a yes. friend of, a personal friend of, of me. So it's, it's you would have been here regardless. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So as Sharifa mentioned, um, July is Fibroids Awareness Month. So I'll share with you um, what we do with the White Dress Project. But I'll just share briefly my journey from a uh, journalist to educator back to journalist and now CEO and founder of a nonprofit for women. Um, so I started out in journalism, went to University of Maryland, got my communications degree in broadcast journalism, mm -hmm. and um, have my own radio show in Miami, um, did a lot of local television, local news. I've always been in news. Um, and at a point, probably about three years into my career, I was just like, I'm over it. News is too much. I don't want to do this. Um, so my mom was a teacher. So I was like, I want to be like my mom. So I went back to school, got my certification, and became a teacher. And I was doing student teaching for, what do you do it for, like six months, a year? Six, six months. Six I, months. I was a non-traditional educator, so oh, I yeah. don't know the answer to that question. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> so we get six months. Yeah. Right. So I probably did it for about six months. And um, got my job shortly after that. And I did student teaching um, for elementary school. And cool. I was just like, oh, this is not for me. <laughs> um, so I got my job. Thank as you I for being honest. Yes. I mean, we had to be truthful mm -hmm. with ourselves. Right, so. right. Definitely wasn't for me. I realized that I needed students to be able to quickly understand what I was trying to let them know. Right. Um, so I found myself in high school. So I taught high school for five years. I was an English teacher. Awesome. Um, so that was really, really rewarding. English. Mm -hmm. And you've mentioned Me too, um, <laughs> that you you would love teaching, that you really did. Love so how did you come teaching. to the place of leaving the classroom? So I was I taught English and journalism, mm -hmm. so I was teaching my students about resume writing and getting a job. So I gave them my resume as an example. You know, maybe we wouldn't do that today, but I gave them <laughs> my resume as an example. And, and they had known of my background in journalism. So one of my students was like, Miss Gray, you know, why are you here with us? You know, you know how They're they so try honest. to. They yeah. are. And they want to know all the business. Right, so. exactly. Yes. Yes. And your journey, too. They want to know your journey. They do. Um, so one of my students sent, I told them this story of um, when I was at University of Maryland, C-SPAN came to University of Maryland, I interviewed, and I didn't get the position. So I was devastated. C-SPAN had always been the place I wanted to work. Mm -hmm. I didn't get the job, so I was like, you know, network TV is out for me. So, wrapping up the story, I gave my student the resume, and they sent it to CNN. Are you serious? Yes, that they is sent amazing. it to CNN. That is crazy. That is amazing. So crazy. <laughs> And um, long story short, CNN called, and they called for an internship. And they were like, you know, your resume doesn't seem like you're a traditional student. And I was like, who is this? <laughs> I'm a teacher. <laughs> right. I'm a teacher, and I don't know who you are. But I, I said a little prayer, and I was like, God, whatever it's to be, right. will be. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, I got the internship, and I moved here from uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I was just supposed to come for the summer because obviously I was a teacher. So I was just supposed to come for the summer, do this internship. And um, I ended up moving up for this summer. And at the end of my internship, they hired me. That is so, amazing. And I've been at CNN now for 11 years. Wow. I think what's yeah. so interesting about that story to me is how 
God still found a way to put you in the place that you needed to be. Right. And, you know, he still opened the doors through your students. That was so unsuspecting. Like, she was genuinely just trying to do her, be in her walk. Right. Trying to Mm -hmm. genuinely and sincerely help these kids. And the door was still right open for you. So, I just think that is inspiring. And I'm just wondering if I can, like, set my elementary kids up to set my resume. I'm going to be like, first, that's okay, babies, let me show y'all this resume. Um, I'm going to go back in the classroom with my small group and we shall, as a matter of fact, going to send this up to us. You know, that is really neat, though, because it was so unsuspecting. It was just and the, the icing on the cake is that um, I've been able to hire my students as interns, my former students. Oh, my God. Um, so it's, it's been so rewarding to do that. It is. Yeah, it is. I love that. So now tell us about, because clearly, you know, a normal person would have been like, I made it. I'm at CNN now, and I'm ready to be just retire there because it's a right. dream job. So how did the White Dress Project um, sprout from all of your success? Right. So the White Dress Project is like my baby. Um, I have suffered with fibroids for a very long time, since I was probably about 15. Always had really heavy periods. Mm -hmm. Um, Never wore any white. And I know that's kind of like vain. But I'm a fashionista, so I'm like, if anything that I'm doing to sacrifice my quality of life or, you know, that I I can't wear something because I'm bleeding all the time, you know, I felt like was a problem. So, um... Mm -hmm. I started the white dress to encourage women um, to share their stories about fibroids and uterine health. Um, And it's really a labor of love. But what I've noticed is that the White Dress Project has really made me strong. Mm -hmm. And it has made me realize that um, sharing your story is a part of your healing, too. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, I've I've had fibroids, had my my myomectomy in 2013. Um, and I started the organization in 2014, and it's really been a great strength for me. My fibroids have since returned, um, and I haven't had a child yet, so, um, you know, the struggle is real for me, and it continues, um, but I really feel like starting this organization, encouraging women to share their stories, you know, when you think about it, guys talk about, you know, whatever they're going through all day long, and, you know, if If they have an issue, all of a sudden you see marketing for it, you see pills, and Mm -hmm. it's, you know, cute and sexy. Um, But our issues below the belt are not discussed. Um, So I just, you know, the white dress has worked for us because it's cute. um, It's sexy. Women like to wear it. Um, But you know that when you are on your period and it's crazy, you can't wear a white dress, obviously. Mm -hmm. But we use it as a symbol of hope and empowerment right. that the disease that. won't hold us back and you have um chartered chapters yes right? so yes. not just in atlanta but also in dc maryland and virginia tomorrow i leave to houston to yes. start a chapter oh, there awesome. so excited about houston sweet tea sweet tea sweet tea yes. 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 Awesome. we love it that we is love awesome it. she's so cute <laughs> Um, so yes, excited to start all over the country. I'm originally from Jamaica, so we're going to start a chapter in Jamaica because okay. um, they have Fibroids Awareness Week. So just excited about growth. So if they wanted to um, give back or get in contact with you, you yeah. Your- so please follow us on all our social media at We Can Wear White, mm-hmm. Facebook, uh, the White Dress Project, and um, the White Dress Project dot org. Perfect. Thank you. And I just want to celebrate you. You've done so much in the amount of time that we um that i've even known you and so um, being able to see every step is really that's just we love celebrating every single thing and i think that's something that we share that we yes. love celebrating women and yes. friend fix that's was a perfect event for you to come to uh, thank you so much yes, both thank of you. you so much i did have a question i know we're wrapping up but a lot of us work with youth, whether that's at our church or whether that is with students. Is there something um, like what I personally need to know what the symptoms are and what type of advice? Because I yeah. know a lot of g- girls don't start going um, to the gynecologist to get that identified very early. Like some kids, some people right. go until they're 20 without, right. you know, or later without even getting a gynecologist to have those regular checkups. So mm-hmm. what, would what would you advise us to say as people who interact with kids often, you know, how can we help them? 
Yeah, so so young women um, right now, I would suggest um, going to the gynecologist as as early as possible, as soon as your period comes. Um, fibrous symptoms, they say, start in your reproductive years, but for me, it started, you know, in my teenage years. Right. Um, so I think it's important if you are having heavy bleeding. An- another problem is that, you know, there's no standard. So mm. when you say to your girlfriend, yeah, I'm having heavy bleeding, it's not like, hey, girl, how many pads are you changing? You know, right. we, we just don't talk about it like right. that. Um, so it wasn't until I went to the doctor and she was like, yeah, your period is only supposed to be eight tablespoons, the duration. And I right. was like, um, what, you mean in the first hour? Like, you know, what? Right. No. No. Right. And I don't mm-hmm. think we have a standard of checking, of knowing what the norm is. The norm is. Absolutely. Exactly. Um, another thing is a protruding belly. I've always been pretty slim, but I, I've always looked like I was pregnant. So, you know, that's that's also something that, you know, you don't, just don't want to deal with. I've, right. So many people have asked oh, when are you expecting? And, you know, that has been because like, your fib- fibroids grow in the same place that baby does in your uterus. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why your your belly protrudes like that. So abdominal pain, heavy bleeding, protruding um, abdomen are all things you should get checked out. Thank and on so a lighter much. note, ladies, if you're listening, please never ask anybody when they're expecting. They right. will share with you if they are about For to have real? a baby. Like, right. honestly, that's a question that we, we probably shouldn't even ask. Uh, right. each other right. um, just good common good courtesy, common courtesy you know cause you never know you, right. you never know what people have going on thank you Tanika <laughs> oh, <laughs> white dress project I love awesome. it I love it I love it and we've talked about her in our podcast yep hello about- <laughs> <laughs> we talked about shopping her kids around at the um, vacation bible school Oh, oh yeah. So, so listen this, to the podcast because she actually is in it in a previous. Uh, it was no. called "Free Yourself." Yeah, it was to all the mamas. Free yourself. Don't you stay in bondage. You find those vocational those. Free- it is a community <laughs> service. <laughs> Whatever. You find those free things to take your baby to get your break, honey. All right. So break. any questions? We're open for one question, and we'll answer it. All right. Us, us three, and she's gonna join in with the answer yes. too. So it, it could be, be any random from, question. It could be anything. It could be something anything. from the podcast that you wanted to chime in on that you haven't had oh, an opportunity Zakia to. Zakia has a question. Thanks, Zakia. <laughs> I was listening the other day, and I was driving home from my commute, and I felt like I wanted to have a conversation with you guys about the fact that you You don't oh. think that you really get the relax, relate, and release when yeah. you have children? Is that what you're saying? Oh, age. How age. old are your babies? Okay, well, probably not quite yet for the three-year-old. I have 11, 8, and 5-year-old. And <laughs> with the 11-year-old, I can totally relax, relate, release. Mm-hmm. With the 8 and the 5-year-old, they're on me. <laughs> like, the 8-year-old has called me eight times since I've been here. So, so. The, yeah, there, there's very minimal. But then you have friends that will take them. So use your <laughs> network, use your community so that you can relax, relate, and release. Welcome to the A's of Kia, girl. You got a support group now, honey. <laughs> That's freedom. And That's then we <laughs> also have, uh, remember we came up with that magic number of the age of three. So after three is when yes. you're actually, we, we figured out that's kind of the time where you're like, okay, I'm ready. I'm tired of this. I'm ready to be me again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can I find you So again? I feel like with your three-year-old, you might be entering into that phase yes. right now. So get She's ready. Like, yes, girl. <laughs> <laughs> you better be, get woke, girl. You there. You better open up your eyes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great answer. So that's what we'll do next time. We'll let you say who you are and what you do. Yeah. The hot seat. Okay. So my question is, um, I just had a baby. Y'all know I just had a baby in March. So now I'm kind of going through, like, the transitional phase. So I'm wondering, like, how do you go from, you know, like, new mommy and everything and then go to sexy wife? Like, how do you do that? How do you master that? Well, I feel like, um, seriously, I, I, y'all might think I'm crazy, but going to pole dancing classes 
helped me get in touch with my sexy. All right. You know, <laughs> it really did. I was like, oh my gosh, like I realized that I could have like had, I was so glad because I could have been like Diamond had I discovered this <laughs> from Players Club. Uh, had I discovered this in college. Okay, PK, no. Like, 